Welcome back. Now, since the Parkland shooting, we have seen new laws passed in Tallahassee, and there was a special commission set up which held numerous hearings finding fault with both the Broward Sheriff's Department and the school district. Last month, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis removed Broward Sheriff Scott Israel because of his handling of the Stoneman Douglas shooting. And there have been calls to remove Broward School Superintendent Robert Runcie. Joining me this morning to discuss what has happened over the last year and where things are likely to go is Scott Travis, who covers the Broward School District for the Sun Sentinel. Uh, Scott, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for so, having me. So let's talk about there seems to be a renewed energy. It died down for a while to try to remove Robert Runcie. I think it even picked up when Scott Israel was removed, like the attention then shifted to him. Where do you see Robert Runcie? How does he stand right now? How does he fare in terms of his support on the board? Well, I think one of the game changers that's happened recently has been the election of Lori Oladef, who is one of the uh, whose daughter Alyssa died in the tragedy. So she came onto the school board as a very sympathetic figure. There's been a perception, at least, that uh, Mr. Runcie has not treated her very well. Uh, he wouldn't let her have the secretary that she wanted. Uh, she, he wouldn't let her put certain items on the agenda that she wanted. And uh, I think that has caused a lot of outrage um, there because it seems like it's viewed that there's a power struggle going on with uh, Mr. Runcie and his supporters still trying to maintain control. There's a faction of the school board that supports Robert Runcie. There's a faction that seems opposed to him. And there's a, several members who are caught in the middle and trying to figure out how to resolve this issue. The, the, the question that I've had about Robert Runcie is, is is different than the ones I've had about Scott Israel. Scott Israel was almost sort of like a competence issue and, and whether or not he really understood what was going on in, in, his, in his department. Whereas with Robert Runcie, I think he's a well-intentioned person, but I think the bureaucracy sometimes gets the better of him and he doesn't seem to move with a sense of urgency. And there was a moment during the Stoneman Douglas Commission hearings back in November where they were talking about the issue of hard corners. You know, these, these sections of, of classrooms that were supposed to be delineated where if somebody was shooting into a classroom, the children would be safe behind these hard corners. And clearly something was going wrong in terms of how they were being implemented. I want to play that sound and then get you to react on the other end. Uh, we're currently working with our security risk consultant to develop some protocols and processes around that. And we intend to implement um, uh, guidance to schools this year of how to create those safer zones or areas within um, classrooms and have those um, delineated. I don't understand why, and again, today you said you're going to give guidance. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me if kids died in that room because the teachers did not make a safe space, why not do it? The facts are the facts, is, is that there's a, at least one student who died on the line. Yeah. There are others who couldn't get into those, and um, I'm going to ask you to create a policy, not a guidance but a policy that mandates that the schools under your direction have a hard corner so that these kids can be safe. See, that to me, that was nine months after the shooting, mm -hmm. and this still hadn't been implemented to create these safe spaces within classrooms. And the superintendent was talking about implement a guidance, mm -hmm. you know, to the district. And, and I think he comes from it from a bureaucratic standpoint, and whether it's this or holding individuals accountable within the school district, there doesn't seem to be that sense of urgency. And I think that's what's been doing him in more than anything else. Your thoughts? Well, one of the issues with the hard corners was that they had a security consultant that actually actually recommended that they not do that. So that was sort of the guidance that they were getting. They felt that maybe if you had a line there that it was viewed as a kill line and that you couldn't always ensure that it was the right spot and not every classroom has a safe corner at all. So there were problems there, but one of the problems that Mr. Runcie had is he he didn't seem to come across as really being definitive as what the answer was. He kind of came across as wanting to please the uh, people that he was talking to. So um, he kind of agreed to that and suddenly they had to adjust their plans. And then um, the school board 
really had to try to come up with a plan to do this, and they found that there's a lot of bureaucracy that gets in the way because who identifies these? Principals say they don't want that responsibility. Teachers union is worried that you're going to punish them if they don't do everything right. And it turned out to be what should have been a very simple thing turned out to be a very difficult thing, and that seems to be common. But that's the but that's the question of leadership. And you heard the chair of that commission, the sheriff from Central Florida, say, you know, you got to cut through this and you got to get it done. Same issue with the Scott Israel on the problems with the radio system. You know, Sheriff Israel tried to point fingers at different agencies and who was really responsible for having a unified radio system that would have helped in this. Mm -hmm. Again, that same chairman said, you got to cut through that. That's what leadership is about, mm -hmm. and that's the, that's what's failing here. Now, one of the questions too that has arises is, is that this has also become almost a racial issue in some mm -hmm. regards because defenders of Robert Runcie are saying that. For for instance, if the governor were to remove Robert Runcie, that it would be a racist act. Mm -hmm. That's got to be a, a powder keg as well within the school district as they try to navigate all of this. Uh, how have you seen that play out? Yeah, I, it's been very unfortunate to watch because there are people that, like Robin Bartleman, who's a school board member, she was one of the ones who helped start the Promise program, which has gotten uh, a lot of controversy. But uh, she's always been a champion for minority students, and Nora Rupert has been one as well, and they are being accused of being racist, so it's, it's unfortunate because of their point of view. And, and I think that a lot of folks believe that if this were Jim Nodder, if this were any of the uh, Till, previous, right. previous superintendents, that the issues are the issues. It really doesn't have anything to do with race, but it's hard to separate that. And, and probably there are some people on the extremes that you can tell in social media that are racist. So. You've, been, you've been covering the story from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about this year. You know, talk to me about what this has been like covering this story, seeing how it developed, whether it's issues regarding Nicholas Cruz or right on through to the school board and just the larger issue. You've talked to many of the families. Give me a sense for this year and, and how it's moved. It's been one of the most intense and difficult years of my career, actually, because basically I haven't covered I've covered very little besides the story. So day in and day out, uh, I've been faced with it. And I mean, it's nothing compared to obviously what the families are going through, but it still has been, um, it's been very difficult. And I, I'm very close with a lot of the families I've been talking to, to them. And, and I hear their constant frustration, not just their extreme grief about what happened, but their frustration that they just can't seem to get anything done in the school district and that's really been difficult and i know that the sun sentinel has had an extremely difficult time to just get the school district to release basic information and to be transparent and to you know tell us exactly what happened and to not try to always spin things to uh, make it look the best for you, but just kind of be honest with us. I, I want to play you something that's a little difficult. The, uh, I was talking to Ted Deutsch recently, and I asked him a question about whether or not there was Parkland fatigue mm -hmm. in certain parts of the community. Can we still play that sound? I don't know if we have, hopefully we have time. Let's play that. I'm, I'm not sure who's saying that. Are they saying that in Orlando, where they're still suffering with Pulse? Are they saying that in Jacksonville, uh, where there was recently a shooting? Are they saying that in Sebring? Are they saying, wh where are they saying that? The fact is, there continues to be uh, gun violence that plagues our state and our country. Uh, it's not, and, and the, the really incredible thing about the Parkland families and about the, the students is that they all understand this is not about this is not about Parkland this is about keeping our kids safe this is about making sure kids don't get shot when they're walking down the streets this is about much more than just one school do you get that sense though I, I, I get his mm -hmm. indignancy at the notion that anyone would be frustrated with this or, or fatigued by this but do you send some of that out there? Absolutely, because uh, just from my reporting, it's focused almost entirely on Stoneman Douglas and Parkland for the past year. So I'm an education reporter. I used to write about all the schools in the district, and I'm getting calls from parents every single day saying we have mold at our school, we have you know an issue here, uh, and it's just we can't get to everything. And um, there's also a dispute with the school board members. Rosalyn Osgood, the African-American uh, member on the board, who uh, she says that there was a shooting at Dillard where there was a student killed about 10 years ago, and they didn't even close school for one day. And all this attention is going to Parkland. And, you know, 
gun violence is something that they've dealt with for years, and why is it that suddenly this white community, this affluent community, um, gets all the attention when you know there are all these other schools in the district, and all, and, and also uh, Lori Rich Levinson believes that we focus way too much on security and we hardly ever talk about academics anymore, which is the reason why, um, what she thinks that the school district does well. So, I know, I know better than to ask you this question as a reporter, you, you don't like to make predictions, but how do you think this plays out for Robert Runsey? Do you have a sense? I, yeah, I, I, I'm not very good at making predictions. Uh, it does not seem to be a sustainable situation right now. The two factions on the board just absolutely hate each other. It's hard to get any, any work done. And I think that something's probably going to happen. Either the school board's going to fire him or the governor's going to take some action to remove uh, school board members. I, don't, I think that would be a line too far, but I think... I also worry about Robert Runsey himself. This has been an incredible stress on him for the past year. At what point does he have to sort of say, I need to remove myself from this for the good of the district as well and for his own peace of mind? Scott, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. We'll be right back.